Well, fall is here, which means it's time for one of the best seasons of the year for photography. I've been out shooting the last few weeks and I've captured some pretty nice fall photos that I've really liked. Thought this would be the perfect opportunity for me to just make a full walkthrough video covering how I'm editing my fall images. Now, a lot of you guys probably already have an editing workflow, but hopefully this will help you to pick up some tips, tricks, and other things that you may learn for your own edits. And you may see how I do things and you may slightly adjust how you do things. Hopefully it'll be helpful for you in one way or another. Now, depending on the edit, I jump back and forth between Lightroom and Photoshop for this tutorial we're just gonna be using Lightroom Classic. I think that's what most of you guys are using, so it's gonna be what I'm gonna be showing you how to edit in. Now, if you are a Photoshop user, you don't use Lightroom, you can do most of these things in Adobe Camera Raw within Photoshop, so still keep watching because I think it'll be helpful for you. Let's jump in there and check out this photo. Now, what I've done before this video is I've just done a focus stack on this in Helicon Focus. I've got another video covering Helicon Focus. We're not gonna talk about it in this video, but I've already done a focus stack, so it should be sharp from front to back. Now, I'm in the develop module here in Lightroom. First thing that I like to do is just go in and adjust the exposure and make the exposure feel right. Now, it's probably a little dark, so I want it about right there. Now, before I go down and adjust the rest of these sliders, I like to go drop into the tone curve. I like to create that S curve to create some contrast in the scene here. And I also like to drag up the blacks point here, not too much to where it gets really, really muddy like that, but just a little bit to bring back some detail. And then I might drag things around a little bit more, but I, you want to make sure you only create the three points there. You don't want to keep clicking and keep creating more points because your photo is going to start to do weird things. You also want to make sure that you are in the point curve and not the parametric curve. So make sure you're in the point curve. And that's pretty much what I'm going to do there. This might be a little too far up. There we go. You can see I just dragged that blacks point up just a touch. Now I'll go in and make some adjustments here to the highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. Now one mistake I see a lot of people make, they'll drop these highlights all the way, um, but this range of tonality just isn't realistic. It does, it's not realistic to think you're gonna get blue sky with these dark details. And the blue sky is also distracting from the scene in my opinion. So for that reason, I either wanna bring this up, but I don't wanna lose these trees too much, or I might just leave it right about zero or just a slight reduction. Just like that is pretty good for me. And then I'll bring up the highlights. Again, same thing. You don't want to go plus 100. It's just not realistic. Uh, and I do want to show off a nice tonal range in my image. Something about right there looks good. You can use the whites to kind of punch things in the image. And you can adjust the blacks as you see fit. Usually I'll bring those up just a touch. So I haven't done a whole lot here, but you can see just a few minor changes. I don't use that contrast slider because I'm getting my contrast from down here in the tone curve. Now we'll go down, you can mess with the texture and clarity and dehaze sliders if you want. I usually like to zoom in when I do that to about, you know, this far is probably good. We can bring the texture up maybe 10 points or so and same with the clarity, maybe 10 points or so. I think that looks all right. I'm not gonna use the dehaze on this photo. Now, um, I want to bring the vibrance and saturation up a little bit. My kind of general rule of thumb is usually about twice as much vibrance as saturation. Somewhere in there looks good. So now that I've kind of expanded this photo out a little bit, I'm starting to notice that there might not be the proper uh, white balance. Things feel a little green. Um, and maybe that is the proper white balance. Maybe it was just green in the field, but I do want to make some adjustments here because I think that I can make this look a little bit better. Now, one thing that I want to be really cautious of is I don't, um, if, if I drag this too far towards yellow, you can see, wow, our fall color gets really good, but our trees get not so good. So we want to try and keep things looking pretty realistic here. Um, if we can, which means these trunks should stay relatively neutral tone. They can be a little bit warm because there's a lot of reflected warm light in here, but we don't want to get them so yellow that they're, you know, like that. And on the other hand, we don't want to get them so blue that they're like that. But generally for a fall photo, most people aren't having the problem of the temperature is too cool. It's usually going to be a too warm problem. First thing that I see though, is I feel like it's too green. So I just want to kick in a touch of magenta. And I don't want to go too far, but somewhere right in there looks good. And then let's just, let's actually, bear with me here, let's cool this down just a touch. 
which seems counterintuitive. It's going to make our colors worse, but just trust me on this one uh, for just a second here. I think this is looking pretty good. We can roll down into the HSL sliders. This is a great way to adjust some of our colors. And one thing you'll notice in these trees, I've got a lot of greens. I'd rather just not have all of these greens. I'd rather have more yellows. So I can go into the hue, grab the green and just slide it. You can see as I adjust it, I can bring it down all the way pretty much um, towards the yellow color. That's gonna make things more yellow in the scene. And you can adjust the yellow slider if you want, but I think you don't wanna get too orange, especially for me with aspens. Um, they generally aren't like red. Uh, that would be more like a maple. But I can bring this just a little bit like that. Now toggle the before and after. You can see this is starting to come along now. You can go in and also adjust the saturation of the yellows and the oranges if you wanted. Uh, additionally, I like to adjust the blues and kind of see what I'm hitting. Usually I will drop the saturation of the blues and I will also increase the luminance just to kind of pop some of these trees just a little bit. Now I think that's looking pretty good. So we're gonna jump in and do a little bit of masking. I think that's what's gonna really help this photo to stand out. So I'm gonna go in, grab my masking tool. Now one thing I've been playing with lately um, that I've been kind of trying to dial in, I'll show you guys what it is, we'll see if it works. But I'm gonna do a color range selection. I'm gonna select the yellows and I'm gonna uh, use the temperature slider to make them more yellow. And then I'm gonna try and select the trees and make them a little bit more blue. That's gonna help give me a little bit of separation between the two and it's also gonna help keep my image look realistic because my trees are going, the trunks are gonna be the right tone. First, let's go in range, color range, and select a yellow that we feel like represents the image well. Let's go somewhere like right here. Now we can zoom out. That's looking pretty good. Now if you wanted it, you could also subtract color range and you could click on the tree here. That's just going to get rid of those trees, so you're really just selecting those yellows. Um, and you can adjust the range as you see fit. Remember, I want to select as much of the leaves, as few of the trees as possible. So basically, if you're not familiar with masking, I've just combined these two masks, the color range, um, in order to get the perfect selection. And I can refine right here to basically make it more or less selective based on the colors that I've selected. Now, again, I want to make Selection that doesn't hit the trees here, that just hits the colors in the back. So that's looking good. Now you can adjust, and you can see as I adjust the temperature here, I'll zoom in here so it's a little easier for you to see. Now you can see we kind of get more control over those yellows. This is a little bit better way to do it than the hue and saturation, in my opinion, um, or the HSL sliders even. This is probably the best way to do it now, before, after, before, after. You can see it just kind of warms things up in here. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but opposite basically for the trees. We're gonna create a new mask and we're gonna try maybe color range. Luminance range may also work, but maybe not. Let's grab those trees. That makes a pretty good selection of the trees. Now I want to subtract color range and I wanna grab the leaves up here. I just wanna make sure that those leaves are not part of my selection there. Oops. Let's try something in here. I don't know if this selection is gonna work. Yeah, you can see it actually did work just a little bit. We're just cooling those trees down and let's actually just reduce the saturation as well. Right in there. And we'll toggle this mask individually. You can see we've just kind of reduced the saturation on the trees. One thing you will notice though, we're also kind of killing the saturation down here in the foreground. So you can also go in if you wanted to do like a subtract and use something like say a brush and you could just come in here and paint this out down here in the foreground if you want. I'm not gonna go through that because it's kind of a long process for me to do that and show you, um, but you kind of get the gist and you kind of understand what I mean.
So one thing that I like to do, if my colors appear a little bit off here, you can go in and play around with HSL sliders, but you can also use this calibration slider. Now what this does is it adjusts the amount of red, green, or blue in each pixel. Every pixel is made up of red, green, and blue combined to make whatever color the pixel is. So this adjusts how much red is in each color, how much green is in each color, or how much blue is in each color. Um, you can adjust the hue or saturation. One thing I'm noticing, these leaves kind of don't look a very nice color. I just want to bring this blue primary slider down to bring them a little bit back to a little bit nicer color. You can see that kind of changes my whole image. It makes it a little more orange, and I am perfectly fine with that. I think that's looking pretty good. Now, this image is starting to really take shape, I think. You can go through and make little adjustments as you see fit. Uh, one thing that I want to try doing is going in and creating a new mask. I'm going to go radial gradient, and I've got this beautiful sun star here, and I want to accentuate that. My feathers at 100. That's perfect. Now let's try and cool. The problem is if I cool this down, you can see it, it goes over onto the trees. So what you can do is, you know, do this radial gradient, make it nice and big. Um, we're going to increase the exposure just a touch, maybe adjust the dehaze. What we can actually do is minus that dehaze slider. Now, if we want to just select the sun, let's try subtract and we're going to subtract luminance range and we're going to click on that sun there and make sure you check show overlay so you can see what you're doing. Now, I want to invert this because right now we're getting rid of the sun. We want to only show the sun. So we're going to invert it. Now you can see it's starting to look a little bit better. We can uncheck that. We can try to cool that down. Yeah, you can see we can cool it down just a little bit or warm it up rather. Somewhere in there is looking pretty good. And then I might just apply one just big radial gradient with just, yeah, just a little bit of light there. Maybe we'll reduce the highlights and increase the exposure. That's going to create light around the scene. But when we reduce those highlights, it's going to show off the kind of clarity and depth of the sun star, which we can also slide the clarity slider, maybe a touch. That's looking pretty good. Now, last thing that I want to do here is kind of create just a little vignette. We could do it using the vignette tool or we can use the masking tool here. I'm probably going to use the masking tool because I think it's going to do a little bit better job. We want to create a new mask. We want to go radial gradient. Let's just click and drag just like this. Now I want to go up and I want to invert this mask. So we're selecting the outside. And I usually like to drop the feather a little bit for a vignette. And we'll drop the exposure. Now we can adjust this around as we see fit and just kind of play with this as much or as little as we need. I'm going to bring the highlights up because I want to kind of protect those bright spots. I don't want to darken them. And then if you're not, if you're finding that this isn't enough, I can create a new mask, a linear gradient, and I might just darken this foreground just a little bit more and create another new mask with a radial gradient on the inside of my photo. And I might just bring up the exposure a touch. So something like that. Now, if you wanted to go in, you could do a little bit of sharpening at the end here. If you did want to do that, I like to zoom in. This photo is already pretty sharp, I would say. But we can bring this up. You can see we don't want to make it too crunchy here. Um, let's hold Alt Option while we drag the masking. Remember, anything that's white will be sharpened. Anything that's black will not. We'll zoom out as we do this. So I want this to be pretty selective. About 95 looks right. Detail all the way up, radius all the way down for landscapes. Now we can go in and sharpen. And we don't want to create noise like we're creating here. Something about in there looks good. Now, that is pretty much how I would edit this photo. Oh, you can also check the remove chromatic aberration box as well while we're here. But otherwise, that is pretty much how I would edit this photo. You can see before and after before and after. Now we did that edit pretty quickly, you know, probably 15 minutes or so. Um, so hopefully you picked up some tips there that will help you to edit this photo.
All right, now that was fast, probably 15 minutes or so, but hopefully that'll help you in order to edit your own fall photos. You can see how much I do in the masking. Hopefully it wasn't too fast paced for you, but if it was, I've got lots of other videos on the channel that dive into things like masking, like the tone curve, um, like focus stacking, all that stuff is here on the channel. So if there was a particular concept that maybe I moved too fast on that you didn't understand that you've never seen before, um, do look around the channel or I'll link a few videos down below of this video that you can see that'll help you maybe to learn some of those concepts. Otherwise, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down below in the comments um, if this video was helpful for you. Additionally, let me know where you're shooting some fall color. I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, really anything that you want to share with me, I love hearing. So again, thank you guys so, so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel so I can continue to bring you these free videos every single week. Otherwise, my name is Austin James Jackson, and we'll see you guys next time.